everyone, welcome to Yester Kitchen. I'm Jill. So today we're going back to 1969 to make an easy classic family dinner, enchilada pie. You're gonna love it. How are you doing? We're cooking the retro dishes you grew up with and recapturing some childhood memories along the way. So, today, today we're going to 1969. Hmm. How old were you in 1969? I was barely here, so I really don't have any memories of 1969. But if you do, I sure would love to hear about them. Give me some comments. Oh, let me read about them. So today we're doing enchilada pie. It was a quick, easy, get it on the table recipe for family dinner with no rolling tortillas and you don't even have to um, fry the tortillas lightly in oil before you put them in the enchilada sauce. You'll see this will all come together. It is just really good. And actually, I do remember having this in the 70s, which is kind of why I picked it. So maybe you do too. If you do, let me know. In the meantime, let's get started. We've got a hot frying pan here. And I'm gonna put maybe about a tablespoon of olive oil just to get it going. We really don't need a lot. And to that, I have a pound of ground beef. So we're just gonna kind of crumple that in there and let that get started. I get the 90-10 ground beef with less fat. It's just what I like, but get whatever you want. You're gonna have to drain the fat, so you might as well start off with less. Okay, and to that, I have one small, finely chopped onion. And we're just gonna put that right on top. A trusty towel. And now we're just gonna start browning the meat. Now, I don't want you to sit here while I brown this whole thing. Hey, we're back and we are having fun. So, as you can see, my ground beef is all brown and the onions are starting to cook away and get translucent. So now we're just gonna finish up this easy filling. To this, I'm gonna add an eight ounce can of tomato sauce and a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And we're gonna add one tablespoon of chili powder. Use any kind you like. I actually, if you live in Santa Fe, I'm jealous. I went there once, I had so much fun, and I bought a ton of ash chili powder there, both green and red, um, so I can do the Christmas thing. So anyway, this is hash chili powder from Santa Fe, but any chili powder, you know what, I'm gonna change out my, to this right now, it's so much easier. Okay, any chili powder will do. I, I make my own, I buy dried chilies and I grind them down so I can make my own blend. I know they have a straight chili powder in the market, anything you like. As a matter of fact, in the 60s and 70s, it probably was that chili powder from the market. So if you want to be really authentic, don't do what I do for the market, buy chili powder. So now, we just want to get this all incorporated, and as you can see, it is all incorporated and very happy. So, oh, by the way, I have an oven set to 400 ready to go. So I'm gonna turn the fire off on this, fire of electricity, and get this out of the way. And we're gonna bring in six corn tortillas. The original recipe says six inch tortillas, which is your standard tortilla. These, these are seven and a half inches. Um, it's just what I have because it fits my bowl, but you can use whatever you like. Okay, so we've got our tortillas and we have about a two quart casserole dish. And all you're gonna do, here's the easy part. This is where you don't have to deal with warming the oil and dipping the tortillas in. I have some very softened butter. I like European butter or Irish butter. It's just, I think it's a lot better. It's more, um, less water content and it's far better on the flavor. So you're just gonna take a tiny bit of butter and you're just gonna, yeah, I know, stick with me. You're gonna butter your tortillas one at a time. And you're gonna put one in. And then you're gonna take a tiny bit of your meat mixture Spread that around. And I have two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. I like sharp cheddar, get whatever kind you want. And you're gonna put some cheese on it. 
and then I have a four ounce can, not the tiny cans of olives, but the next size up of sliced black olives. And I'm putting some of those on there. And you're just gonna keep doing it until all six tortillas are done. It's that easy. I know, silly, right? So while I'm doing this, I'm gonna tell you a couple of new things that are happening on my channel that I'm so excited about. First of all, I've hated those drapes since day one. And they're going away. And my beautiful, another almost famous friend of mine, Erin, thank you, Erin, you're amazing, is coming. She, she works on TV sets and movie sets and she knows what she's doing. So she is taking care of the drapes and I'm probably gonna show you some film when they come down because I'm gonna be just as excited. And so um, that's changing. I'm changing my format just a little bit. I'm going to, instead of just doing retro history, which I love and is my passion. Um, I'm starting to focus more on food as childhood memories as well. So sometimes I'll do a show on my old school. And if you're new, watch it. I'll, I'll put up a couple old videos so you can see what I'm talking about. But I'll do, um, do my old retro history, you know, where I make the dish and I talk about the history. But then I'm gonna mix it up and keep you guessing. Sometimes, like today, I'm just gonna do a recipe that just evokes childhood memories. And like right now, like I said, the recipe's from 1969. But I definitely had it in the 70s. Did your mom make this? Did your mom make anything like this? This is what I want to hear about. So sometimes the shows will be like that. And then the last part is I want to have the show about you. Seriously. Um, if you have a recipe that maybe your mom made all the time that you love, or maybe someone in your family made something special on the holidays that you couldn't wait for, I would love to hear about it. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm, I've already been getting um, a lot of recipes from people. I'm asking if you can send me the recipe and your story behind it. And if I can, I'm gonna make an episode out of your recipe because we're all in this together, right? So go to my website, yesterkitchen.com and click on the contact and submission tab and just write me everything. I would love to hear about it. And um, I will give you full credit. I don't have to give you credit. You can be anonymous, it's whatever you're comfortable with. But I just, I, I, want, I want to start learning about you and I want to start making this channel about you too. So as the, um, oh, you can't see that. There you go. So as, as more recipes and stories come in, I'm going to start just making a playlist just about you. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're done. We've got all six, all six layers. I'm just putting the last bit of cheese on top because cheese, right? Anyway, this this dish just brings back tons of memories for me. And if it doesn't for you, at least try it. Oop, I love a fan away because it's really good. It's really easy. It's really fast. All we're gonna do now is we're gonna pour a half cup of water. Yes, water. Right in the bottom. And that's just gonna create some steam and help it cook all the way through. Well, I mean, it's cooked, but I mean, help the tortillas soften along with the butter, and you got that whole thing going. And then we're gonna cover it. I'm gonna pop this in the oven for 20 minutes, and I will be right back. I left it in about five minutes longer, so it's been 25 minutes. Take a look. Look at that. It is gorgeous, it is cheesy, it is childhood, it is future memories. Whatever works for you, it is good and it's easy. Make a little salad on the side and you're golden. So let's cut into this. I want you to see all these beautiful layers. And this way, you can have enchiladas without the rolling and without the but the first piece is always the toughest. There. Without the rolling and without dipping them in oil first. So I want you to see, look at all the layers this thing has. I mean, it's just, it's perfect. And this will feed about six to eight people easily, well, depending on your appetite. After I film, my son is home from college. He actually plays football 
for um, at the college level out of state. I'm bringing this to him. He'll be so happy. But in the meantime, oh, forgot to tell you, um, I went ahead and sprayed the dish with cooking spray before I put anything in it. And all the ingredients are right down in the description. I hope you make this. I hope you try it. I hope you tell me about it because this is pretty awesome. If you would like to explore more dishes from your childhood or just the past, I invite you to subscribe. In the meantime, here's some more retro dishes for you. And remember, every dish has a story. I'll see you in the next video.